Hey, hello and welcome to this really fun tutorial by Promotion. Because today I'm going to show you how you can track your head and add a CG helmet to it. So just follow me into After Effects. Hey, hello and welcome to this really fun tutorial by Promotion. Because today I'm going to show you how you can track your head and add a CG helmet to it. So just follow me. So finally we're able to do those kinds of shots completely within After Effects. So don't get me wrong, I don't think that After Effects will take over the role of a dedicated 3D software, but there are a thousand easy tasks that can be done with this workflow, where you now simply don't have to switch into a different program. So that saves time and time saves money and clients love money. and. So the money distracts the client and if they are distracted they cannot annoy you at the same time. So here we go. Let's directly import the footage I have shot for this and apply the geo tracker to this. Well because at the moment this is the only tool in the world that can do object tracks in After Effects. And to all of you who are now saying that this is something that you have to pay additionally, I once again made an awesome deal with the creators of this groundbreaking plugin and will give away two licenses for this for free at the end of this tutorial. So, while I was talking, you may have seen that GeoTracker has already analyzed my footage for faster tracking once we have defined what we want to track. And, well, I want to track my face and add a 3D object later. And for that, I will need a camera. So it is super important to set this up before starting the tracking. Because if you adjust that later, that will simply mess up everything. So think about, well, tracking a shot and once you have done, you switch out the shot. You don't want to do that. So when creating something in 3D, always create your camera first. And in this case, I also know that I shot this on a 50 millimeter lens. So I also adjust that. Now let's choose a primitive here. And obviously I'm going for the head. I could only use parts of this as my mouth is moving and I could, for example, hide my jaw. But I found leaving everything enabled gives me a visually better understanding of what I'm tracking. Because I also want to use the head later as a depth or holdout mat. And I can simply click on it and get a track point to adjust. So simply try not to use too many as you then have to tweak too much if you want to tweak something. Okay, now let's open the toolbar, which is our tracker. And that is only enabled once the analyzing is finished. And track forward. And simply adjust it whenever it is off. And once you made it through the whole clip, click on refine all, so it takes all your tweaks into the recalculation of the perfect track. And if you are working on only one keyframe, you can only refine the closest keyframes only. And one super cool feature is that all of this is linked later on. So even if we have a final shot, I can still work on the track and refine it. So let's go to the export tab and click on export null for the object track. And this now sits in the center of our model we used for tracking. Hey, and we can also export exactly that model we used for tracking. So let's do that and directly re-import it because that is the reference we need to get all of this going. So I just drag it onto our comp, parent it to the null we just created and now just zero out the transformation data so it sits at the same spot or in the right spot. So just align the scaling now as After Effects is importing different models based on their origin software differently scaling wise. And a good workflow is to lock this layer now because I want to use this throughout the whole tutorial. Which, by the way, is almost over because we have done the hardest part already. Okay, I got my Iron Man helmet from Sketchfab. So let's search for Iron Man helmet. Okay, and download this one for free. Drag this into the comp and now we can align it or in other words put the helmet over my head. And an easy way to do this is by using a custom camera view because now you can use the C button to orbit, pan and dolly without messing up our camera we have set up. Okay, again, let's parent it to the null and zero out the values and fine tweak afterwards. So far, so good. 
Now let's work on the integration. And I want to use image-based lighting for this. That means I use a 360 degree image that lightens the scene based on well, color and brightness. Hey, but I want my YouTube workspace room to be the 360 degree image. And I found a super cool way to do that with a free app called 360 Photos via Camera. Whew. And I will link it in the description. With that, you are guided on how to take about 30 pictures and the app creates a 360 degree image out of that. Well, so far, so good. You can now have a look at my room. Here's the camera, lights, a drum set, a bunch of guitars. Now you know that too. But we have two problems. So my wall is white. All these sheets. And my light dome is also white, but obviously my light dome is way brighter. Or in other words, if I would use that now, the helmet would get the same light from the light dome as it would get from everything in the room that is white. Because that JPEG file can't store what is called super whites. But let's fix this. I mainly have two lights, the light dome and this blue LED panel. So for the light dome, I add a white solid and put it on top and mask it out. Now I can add an exposure effect and simply make it, well, two stops brighter. Still looks white, but you can check if I go down with the exposure here, it is now the brightest part of the image. Perfect. And I do the same with the blue LED. Create a blue solid and bring up the exposure. Now it also gets white, but when slowly bringing down the exposure, I see it's together with the light dome, now the brightest part in the image. And now I render this out as an radiance sequence, which will create an HDR image out of this. And just make sure to be in 32-bit for this. Okay, now I have this image that I can import into the scene and choose in the environment light. And now the helmet is lit with my room. Boom. And I can also see my room in the reflections. Well, it doesn't get better than that. Maybe. Well, I ran into an issue when doing my tutorial. So now at the end, before I'm doing the free giveaway, let me show you what I came up with. For that, let me use a helmet where we do not have the front part. And now you can directly see the issue. How do I get my head in there? I cannot roll it out and place it on top because parts of it should be covered with the helmet and parts shouldn't be visible. Hmm. I need some kind of 3D holdout mat. But how do we get that? Hmm. Remember when I told you that I want to use the head as holdout mat? Well, you see that this will not work as planned also. Even though this is pretty neat for rotoing advanced stuff. But here is my solution. Let's solo not only the head, but also the helmet. And turn off the environment light and add an ambient light. Because that kind of light brightens up everything in the exact same way. So no fall off and no shadows. And now I have the part that I want, my head, in pure white. I can render this and use a levels effect afterwards to only have a black and white image. Or I could create a second version of the helmet with a black shader. So both leaves me with a luma mat. Ta-da! I can use that for my face. And the cool thing about this, I can now use a layer style, so for example the inner shadow, to create a fake shadow on my face. And in the same way, I created the holdout for my eyes for the Iron Man look. Super cool. And yes, yes, I know. You are all watching because you want to get a free license. And for that, you need to do two things. First, subscribe to my channel and then leave me a comment telling me which Marvel or superhero effect is your favorite and you may want to see explained by me. And I will announce the lucky winners in the next tutorial. And for now, I wish you a lot of fun with object tracks in After Effects.